Welcome back, guys. Kibla Ahmed out here, G Man One Eight Seven. What's happening, people? Good, what good, is good. going on? Good, 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 good. It's number ninety four, guys. Uh, we had a week off last week. My uh, my laptop officially lose. Uh, had to say goodbye to an old friend, which is quite tough when something's been a part of you for almost eleven years. That MacBook, man, it did so much, and it started this podcast, and it was emotional, man, because I did a lot of work on it as well. Uh, I made that a thousand pound investment eleven years ago, and for it to last me eleven years, <laughs> it was amazing. I mean, it had a few upgrades along the way, but it did its job, you know what I mean? So, uh, had well, to have a break. The- you're, you're emotionally attached to a piece of technology, bro. That's how Skynet gets you. No, 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 man. When your work's on it, then it's a whole different game, bro. It's the work that we did together on it. Uh, but no, that's, 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 it's that's easy. Exactly it, what Skynet, that's exactly what Skynet wants you to think. Skynet, let Skynet take <laughs> over, bro. <laughs> they are Skynet as well. That's the thing, isn't it? <coughs> uh, <clears throat> excuse me, still... I think I'm still at the end of this shitty cold that's going around the UK at the moment. Little girl's been ill. Uh, but loads to catch up with, mm. guys. Loads to catch up with. Loads. Of... How you been, talk bro? About... How's things? I was just saying, talk about cold, man. What about this freaking woohoo virus that's gone out? It, it, this uh, woohoo virus, bro. Scary Mad shit, thing, bro. So, so, some, like, so, it's a serious thing, obviously, right? This woman... I hope I'm getting my facts straight because this is what I heard and I and I read something. This woman tried this bat soup. Bat. This bitch tried to be Batman out here, right? And ate this bat soup. And then obviously, you know, you eat in certain animals and whatnot that, you know. You don't know what they carry. Yeah. And then so she caught this thing, spread it all over this province in China, Wuhan or something like that. Um, and now it's spread it right uh, all over China. Not all over China, but that's the main thing. It's spreading around because people are going in and out. So now the Chinese government, you can only do this in China. They've kind of quarantined that whole fucking city or province or whatnot. Um, but it's already spread it to a few different countries. But everyone's on it. You know what I mean? Like every country, every every flight that comes out of China or dumb areas, yeah. Or even in general, people are just getting scanned at the airport. And if they sense anything wrong, they're taking you away to do further testing and whatnot. So they kind of got it on lock. But man, it's some serious shit, man. Some fucking outbrain, out- outbreak shit. Fucking yeah. Chinese bats and shit. Um, it's scary, man. Even people. I was supposed to go. Um, like, uh, I was speaking to, like, this is crazy, I was speaking to Misha Tate, right? Yeah. Um, if you know MMA and UFC, you know she's a legend. She was just talking about how she doesn't want to really go out too much uh, during the CNY, because it's, oh yeah, Kong Hei Fat Choi, everybody. Um, yeah. Happy CNY, everyone wishing everyone yeah. the blessed year of the rat. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she was just saying she don't want to go out because of this virus. There's been two cases in Singapore. Uh. Uh, a friend of mine messaged me today, yeah, saying that she we we're supposed to go cinema. She was like, "Gee, I'm not, I'm not coming. My family's kind of advised me not to come because of this woohoo virus." Um, so it's it's a scary thing. People don't want to go out much and stuff because you know, um, I'm 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 just out and about. Um, you know, I don't know. Uh, I'm not gonna stay indoors and just keep my immune system up and healthy and shit. But uh. Yeah, bro. <laughs> oh man, be careful. Anyway, that's got me. Uh, yeah, I know mum and dad are coming soon, so just keep them, keep them safe. They should be fine. I mean, everything should be all right. I'm, they're looking after this pretty well, and if people are feeling a bit ill, they're running to the hospital and doctors anyway. So, uh, yeah, that's it's some serious game, man. I don't know. I need to read up on this because I want to find out more about this virus. Like, and how brave can you be to have bat soup? You know what I mean? Like guano. Guano. Well, look, bro, man. Look, look. In, in different parts of the world, right? Um, picking China, picking on China in this specific case, people eat rare and fucking fucked up shit, right? Mm. To us, it's fucked up. To us, to them, it's like it's a casual day and casual day on a, on, a, on a, it's a casual Saturday. You know what I mean? I'm going to have some bat soup. Yeah. Um, I think the bat soup might have been a rare thing, but you know, like you know, they eat dogs and all that sort of stuff. And when I see that, it breaks my heart just yeah. because I grew up with fucking Lassie and shit, yeah, yeah. littlest hobo and all those. Yeah, so yeah. it breaks my heart. Like, and we know dogs to be our, uh, an animal, but to them, I mean, the animal that we, uh, you know, has have as pets and best friends and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But to them, it's uh, it's dinner time, man. Shit, it's protein. Um, 
So we can't judge them on it, if that makes sense. No, no, um, of course, of course, of course. You know, I mean, we, every culture we eat has cows and whatnot, and then you got people in India, for example, that worship cows. So to them, it's more sacred. So it's a different thing. But yeah, that people eat spontaneous shit, man, and that's why I'm not very curious with food anymore. After mm. my incident in Japan, I was like, what am I doing eating this shit? Like, what was it? Just stick to it. I ate. I went to a ninja restaurant, so I ate. I ate food, but it was all covered in squid ink, black squid ink. And that fucked me up. And ever since then, I was like, nah, I don't need to be curious with food. I'm not. It's not one of those things where I'm like, man, I should have tried that. So is that the one where you puked up? Yeah, <laughs> like exorcist and shit. It was nasty. <laughs> uh, yeah, George was there as well. That was nasty, man. Had puke all over my foot and everything. But it felt so good coming out because you know when it's in you, you just feel terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. I had a flight to catch. Uh, even though I caught this flight with puke over my feet and whatnot. <laughs> Uh, it just was good at it was out of my system, um, but I've I've ne ever since then I've never been like man I should have tried that monkey ass or something like you know what I mean <laughs> I'm, I'm cool I'm cool not to eat anything bro <laughs> yeah now nah, be safe be safe you do what you do you you can only yeah as you said it's curiosity isn't it it's a certain amount you 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 can do and want so. No, it's all good, man. That's all good. That's all good. That's all good. I went to um another thing. I went to. I went to a comedy club the other day, man, for the first time ever. How was it? Bro, it was fucking awesome. It was just this really small place. So yeah. I swear to you, our living room in the in in, in mum's house is probably bigger, right? Uh, so it's very intimate. Um, but it was awesome. It's the first time I've ever been. I I listen to the Rogan podcast religiously. I love that shit. And a lot of time he talks about stand-up comedy and he has his comedian friends on and they talk about how hard it is and whatnot so i really because of that i really appreciated the guys or and the girls going up on stage and you know you're talking to a group of people strangers and you have to make them laugh like yeah. it's a fucking hard gig bro it is and it you is. know stand-up comedy is like almost that final line of uh freedom of speech especially maybe in a country like singapore for example where yeah. the government's a bit tight on things um I, I, I enjoyed it even more. I appreciated it even more and I enjoyed it. The jokes made me laugh, man. It was it was actually really good. Um, something that I would like to do again, just and go to other comedy shows and whatnot. Um, I recommend it, man. I, rec I, really, I really give him credit, man. Like, even more respect for like the comedians that we see on Netflix and whatnot. It must be such a hard thing to do. Of course, it is a hard thing, man. It's definitely a hard thing. I think uh, standing in front of people... And a massive amount of people is hard to talk in front of. Uh, yeah, think, let I'm, alone trying to make them laugh for exactly, fucking an hour. Yeah. Really, really, uh, really, really tough job that is, man. That's not, that's not an easy, that's not an easy game. Trust, definitely not an easy game. That is a hard one. <coughs> uh, but yeah, man. All right, let's jump in, man. Like, there's a, uh, a lot happening at the moment. Uh, I'm trying to, backtrack from two weeks ago on what's been happening. Did you see that trailer by Daniel Radcliffe called Gun Ak Akimbo? I did not. No, I did not. I saw uh, you or Ash post it, but I didn't I didn't see it. How was it? It's actually really good, bro. Uh, I'll give you... Uh, it's basically... It's like based in a game reality world. Mm -hmm. and he's just a normal guy, everyday guy. He's a gamer as well. And then he wakes up one morning and he's got these two guns bolted to his hands oh shit okay and now he has to play this game as well oh interesting interesting One you know because i always thought with him you know he was being in harry he we grew, the audience or the viewers would have grew up with this kid hmm. in harry potter literally grew up with him right yeah. and i always thought would he be attached to that but it's good that he's um, i'm glad he's out there doing you know getting up and movies, doing other yeah. stuff yeah, yeah definitely yeah, no, uh, I'm looking forward to that. That looked really good and fun. Uh, happy birthday to Muhammad Ali, which was last week. Uh, to the greatest of all time. Uh, Alhamdulillah, man. That guy's been it was a blessing on this planet. Uh, and it's, uh, it was nice to see all the posts that people put up uh, in his like remembrance, uh, which was quite nice. Cause Martin Luther King Day as well. It was huh? Martin Luther King Day uh, last week in, uh, in the US. Yes, that, that's the day. Was it last week? Last Monday, I think it was. I know she says... I think Alara shares the same birthday as her him. I think... I think she said... I have to double check. I think she might share the same birthday as Ali. 
Martin Luther Day, like Martin Luther King Day. I don't know if that's based on his birthday or his death or just the day. I'll have to double that check. They that. That, yeah, that they dedicated to him. Yeah. But um, no, such amazing, amazing human beings, and I feel like like I I feel like we don't have that as much. Um, we don't. We don't. We don't. There's nobody it, I can say now, <laughs> except Ro Robert De Niro. Uh, De Niro. Yeah. No, because you know him and Trump had their little beef. He gives me joke, bro. He'd be up on normal daytime TV saying, fuck that motherfucker. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I so he, I, I rate him. I rate him. I've got, I've got enough respect for De Niro, his trade and the things he does as well. Like, I've been watching a lot of documentaries about him and the Irishman and, you know, just his process, his skills and, well, you know, where he's, you know, where he, he's good at what he does, you know. There's a reason why he picks specific projects because it's like, look, at the end of the day, yes, it's a job. You know, I'm not... I'm just trying to get by, you know what I mean? He's just an everyday dude trying to get by. And and I love that. I love that. I love that. But no, there's no nobody in that sense of like, you know, Princess Diana, Bruce Lee, stuff like that. That I can look back yeah. and say Shit. It's a different era. I mean, don't get me wrong, you got like like Kobe. Mm. I don't know shit about basketball, but I finished the name Kobe. He set up that foundation. Yeah. And all that sort of stuff. So you got people doing some shit. You got like Khabib setting up some charity stuff, uh, charity yeah. stuff uh, after he became champion. A couple of other UFC. I, I know more about MMA fighters because that's what yeah. I follow. Um, but yeah, you know, you do have some sports athletes that do charity stuff. But Ali was different, man. Maybe yeah. because it was a time as well. Yeah. But he really used his platform to 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 spread a, a good message out there and, of course uh, and just bring equality to his people and then you know and then even with islam and whatnot man how, yeah. how we just went about that and you know and he was like listen i'm not gonna after i retire i'm gonna i'm gonna work on you know going to heaven like yeah. you know what i mean i need to do i need to do what i need to do to go to heaven and that was his way of expressing his islam like not just doing the islamic values but helping people that was a part no, of it that's right, that's uh, right. That's such right. an inspiration man i tell you something man like and you mentioned Muhammad Ali. To, Muhammad Ali and like, in the martial art world, Muhammad Ali and Bruce Lee, man, they're just yeah. two names that you say and everyone just like you know bows down. I love like Tyson, for example. I always pick on him because like yeah. every time he talks about Ali, he starts crying. And to see someone like Tyson, who was just <laughs> a monster, a monster <laughs> right? He was a monster basically. To just re, it makes him so human, and yeah. it just gets me emotional. The the love he had for him and and whatnot, it's it's amazing, man. So no, it's brilliant. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing, like, and it's beautiful people, isn't it? It's like we come to a point now where we don't have beautiful people. There are beautiful people, but I mean, like, there's nothing. What's the word? There's nobody there, man. There's nobody I can actually just pinpoint the name and just say it. You know what I mean? Uh, People don't really, I don't know, man. People, there are, there are out there. We're just saying shit, but I think there are out there. But there was, there's a certain impact that Muhammad Ali made on the world um, yeah. in his time. Maybe it's because of the time that we're living in now. Certain people don't make as much impact as they used to. Yeah. But uh, maybe because there's all this social media, there's all these other sort of things in the world. Um, back then, there was no social media. So you saw whatever you saw on the TV or heard on the radio, and it was just one avenue. Right, so you didn't know what you know Joe Bloggs down the road was doing to help people. Do you know what I'm trying to no, say? No, no, of course. Now That's you very true. Some, yeah. That's true. So now, so you know, maybe that has something to do with it. Um, but yeah, man, it, it's it's amazing, and I love the fact that every year when it's his birthday, you know, someone posts something, and then everyone else just starts. Oh, like Muhammad Ali. It's a great day to remember. It's like a, you know, it's a great day to remember a great human being. You know what I mean? No, no, of course, of course, of course, definitely is, definitely is. Uh... Did you hear they announced National Treasure Free is coming mm -hmm. soon? Mister, hey, he's got a new film out as well uh, about a jaguar or something like smuggling some animals and shit. Have you heard about this? No, no, no. I want to see out, that. I, I think it's out now in cinemas now. I mean, I haven't taken a look. I mean, Nicolas Cage is awesome, but I'm just, um, you know, I don't know. It's a hard one to follow. He does, he he does. You know what? He does a wide variety of movies. Bless him. He's like De Niro as well. He's just a guy who takes a job and does the best he can with it. You know what I mean? Uh, mm. That one's good. Uh, what else has been happening, bro? Going, for, you know, because I'm still unpacking. I found the animated X Men series. I was moist. I just can't wait to get a DVD mm. player and a TV. Did I see up. like twenty five hours of fucking show? That's awesome. It's, it's all all five seasons, isn't it? One of the best. Hey, they're gonna put that all on Disney Plus, man. Yeah, bro. That was the next thing I was gonna say. Did you? We're, we're probably gonna get it a bit early. 
It's gonna be five ninety nine well, a month. Are. We ain't getting shit out here, man. But yeah, you guys are. <laughs> yeah, five ninety nine a month. Uh, for all the Blu-rays that we've already got, and all the cartoons we've already got, that we're gonna spend more money a month on them because it's just gonna put the Marvel shows on there. So, listen, bro. They know what they're doing. They worked it out. They're gonna give it a bit more earlier into the UK now, and you know, let's see what happens. Let's see how, what they're gonna bring to the UK and you know this side of the world to to make it interesting because when they released it, they had the Mandalorian. That's gonna be hard to beat, bro. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Hard to be. Yeah. Well, uh, Falcon <coughs> and Winter Soldier, right? That's the first one. Is that the first one? They're I gonna think release? so. No. I think so. I think so. I'm proper looking forward to that, bro. I'm so invested. After Infinity War, you actually want to know uh, Endgame, so we, we want to know what happens to these guys, man. No, so um, definitely, definitely. So invested, bro. We're so invested in these stories, in these characters. Hundred percent, I'll pay for it. I don't give a fuck. I'll no, pay no, for it. Exactly, Take my money, exactly. man. Uh, so last week I went to a screener while the Oscar buzzers are going around. I got to watch Lighthouse, Robert Patterson and uh, William Dafoe. The movie was good, bro. Uh, I'm, I've always been a big fan of cinema, as they would say, as much as I love my geeky stuff. I love a good film on the big screen and, you know, watching two people go crazy on an island uh, and driven to madness. It, they played really, really it's a terrifying movie, bro, because you don't know what goes through the guys, people's heads when you're just with two people on an island. Mm. You know, mm. uh, the movie's called Lighthouse. Uh, shout outs to uh, Universal UK. Thanks for the invite. Uh, yeah, interesting movie, man. Very interesting movie. Uh, and it just gave me hope because, you know, they started filming Batman last week or two weeks ago in London. So. I think Robert Patterson's going to be a good Batman, man. I, I, be, I believe in Matt Reeves' vision. I think Matt Reeves is an excellent director. I think when he gave me the last two Planet of the Apes movies, I was like, this guy, he knows what to do. He's got the visuals. And there's a reason why he's bringing in the rogues gallery. So it'd be interesting to see what they do, bro. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I, yeah. Listen, with a, with a great movie, with a great script, great direction, he'll be awesome. Yeah. He'll be awesome. Listen... Like, look at Joker that just came out. You know what I mean? Like, look at Heath Ledger's Joker. Everyone was like, oh, Heath Ledger, Heath Ledger he just done um, Brokeback Mountain. He's going to be crap and kill it. You know what I mean? It's all got to do with the movie itself because the yeah. actor's going to do his part. Yeah. Movie itself. Like, look at Joe. Like, I feel sorry for Joe, Joe Little because his, his Joker was not great, but he done the best. He is an amazing actor, so yeah. he done the best that he could do with what he had. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. That was a director's vision. Yeah. That was the direction of the movie. That was a script of the movie. So he was like, all right, you give me all of that. I could do the best I could do with this. Exactly. Now, you put him in the Joker that just came out, I guarantee you he would do a fucking Oscar-winning performance exactly. as well. Because exactly. that's a great movie. Yeah. Uh, just the Suicide Squad was just a shit movie. And that fucked up Joe Little's um, Joker, to be honest. Yeah, no, um, of course, of course. Definitely did. Yeah, definitely so did. I, I believe if the movie's going to be good, man, Patterson will do a great job. No, he will, he will, he will. Uh, I got to go to the Toy Fair just last week, 2018 in London. So Funko Pop, Spin Masters, uh, did more of a networking day. I uh, got to see some exclusive pops as well. They sent me the exclusive Captain America with the the hammer and the lightning, Sick. quite moist. Sick. And they sent me out a Thanos as well, so... Yeah, no, it was pretty cool, man. It was just a networking day. It's getting to see the products, you know, stuff that I love. You know, they've created a fandom out of these little characters, bro. And it's grown massive. And there's not one household that you would go to that wouldn't have these. And, like, now I've I've got this fetish of getting them signed by the creators or the artist or, you know, the, mm-hmm. the film star any themselves. Fetish. So it's like uh, any fetishes, yeah, that, uh, <laughs> that, that, that make me go and take this pop to somebody and be like i remember when i met george perez and i gave him the thanos pop and he was like you want to get this sign you don't want to get a comic book sign and i was like you know what dude i didn't even think about that it's the first thing i saw in the house and it's related to infinity gauntlet i bought that and he, he loved it he was absolutely he's like i'm signing my first toy here you know what i mean so oh, that's awesome yeah i think yeah it, um they, they you know someone came out with this vision and now they got a funko pop for it anything out there bro yeah. you think of anything i've got one of muhammad ali bro yeah. like and, and stuff like you know what i mean it, sick, it's yeah. not just comic books it's everything and everyone exactly. 
Um, yeah, no, that's awesome, bro. That's awesome. I saw some of the pictures, bro. Uh, the Fantastic and, yeah. Four looks sick. Yeah, that's, that's sick. Well, Marvel, I guess Marvel is investing back in them. Yes, definitely. Because they yeah. have them now. Yeah. Uh, so before they were like fuck that. <laughs> yeah, so the Fantastic Four was pretty sick, and then the new what about Star Wars. Things? Sorry. Oh, go on, go on. New the, Star Wars. The new Star Wars Funko Pops, the 40th anniversary of Empire Strikes Back. Uh, they got some oh. sick ones, bro. That Han Solo one, moist, moist. Sick. Yeah. I was uh, gonna say, did you see uh, these pictures from Falcon and Winter Soldier that that's saying that it's introducing mutants, something to do with an island? I, I'm not too familiar with it and that symbol, uh, and that that symbol is supposed to represent mutants or, or mutant family or whatever. Yeah, I saw um, I saw that as well. Uh, and basically, it's an island called I don't know, somewhere, in, is it Malaysia or somewhere? Well, basically, I was gonna it's say, based... Genosha, but Genosha is uh, Magneto's island. Yeah, right? yeah, That's yeah. Wrong, so this is somewhere in yeah. in the middle, not Middle East, somewhere in Asia, bro. And it's basically a, a hideout for mutant for mutants. But this is where they introduce, like, this is where Wolverine hid out there once. He had an eye patch. His name was Poe in that, not Poe, Poe. His name was something. I remember in the comic books. But it's where Wolverine goes to chill out. Oh, sick. Okay. Yeah, so okay. I'm, I don't know, man. It's a way they could could link it together, but that's something so I saw cool. recently. Little, little things. That's, they don't have to put an X-Men in now like, or Mutant in now. Just little, little things to just build it up to whatever they're going to do, man. Exactly. That one thing. I, I honestly feel that when they do it, they should do it big, man. Like something that would just get you off your seat. That would be like, oh, my God. Like, mm. Do you know what I mean? Like one of those Captain America wielding um, Thor's hammers type moments. Like... Man, could you just imagine if they did that, like in Infinity, uh, in in um, in uh, what do you call it, in End Games, like something? I don't know. Wolverine came out. You would have bust fifty nuts, bro, man. It would have been mad. Of course. Um, I don't know, man. It would have been crazy. Just being moist right now, but yeah, I, I so cool that Marvel's, you know, slowly getting them in. Of course they no, have of to. Course, of course, of course they have. They have to. They, they, got have whole, to. they got a whole franchise they could... Bro, they can make billion dollar... They, bro, Marvel's on this billion dollar movie game, bro. Man. Yeah, I'm yeah, telling they're, you. They're not messing around. They no can't more, make... They, they, they're not messing around no more. They're like, if our movies don't make a billion, then it's a flop. To them, it's probably a flop. It probably made 900 million, and they're like, no, 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 it's a flop. Didn't make that billion mark. Uh, and with X-Men, you got that same thing, because how many characters can you get involved in an X-Men and just create a whole new of course. endgame type thing? Massive you know what I mean? Like Massive X-Men versus so-and-so, or, you know. Ah, oh, man. The moistness, man. The moistness. Don't get me moist. Know. I'm too moist. Same here, bro. Disney Plus. I'm going to write this down so I don't forget, bro, man. But, uh... That's about it, bro. Other than that, I don't know. Was there anything else on your side? Oh, yes. How was Bad Boys? Oh, yeah. I watched Bad Boys. Uh, Bad Boys for life. Yeah, awesome. Don't tell <laughs> so me. So awesome, bro. No spoilers. Uh, I, won't, seen... I won't spoil anything, but, uh, yeah, you know, it brings back Mike Lowry and, uh, and um, the hell was his name again? Mike and, uh, I forgot his name already. Uh, but it brings Martin Lawrence and Will Smith, yeah. man. They just went straight back into their characters. Yeah. And uh, and it just brought back the 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 same the same feeling that you'll get from watching Bad Boys One, Bad Boys Two, and obviously it's been twenty has it been twenty years about twenty years since the last one, and you know they bring that in well like you know you have to they've ch- you know the times have changed they've got older so they kind of um um what do you call it incorporate all of that you know I was watching loads of interviews with Martin Lawrence and uh, and Will Smith they've yeah. just been going around on different podcasts and shows. Yeah. And I remember watching the trailer and I saw Martin Lawrence's face. I'm like, man, he got fat, bro. And then he he mentions it on 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 the um on the interviews. Yeah. That he's like, yeah, I got a bit chubby, but it goes with the movie. He got chubby because he couldn't work out because he hurt his back. Yeah. So that was the official reason, not because he had, not just because he became lazy dude or he was supposed to be fat for the movie. He couldn't work out, so he was like, you know, we'll make it work with the movie, and it was awesome. It was so <laughs> awesome, and. Uh, you know, <coughs> comedy. Uh, the, the, you know, that that was a comedy where um, it's like intelligent comedy yeah. in the sense that it's all dialogue, dialogue that makes you laugh, and their characteristics yeah. that make you laugh. I loved it, man. I, I really enjoyed it. Somebody told me that, that it was they liked it better than the first two, bro. It's it's definitely great. It, it's not shit. All three of them are great. Like you yeah. know, like 
you're like, ah, oh, they messed up with the third one. Oh, they messed up with the second. All three of them are just fun movies to watch, bro, that's man. Good, that's so good, much that's good, good humor, good action. You're just like, this is a fun fucking movie. You can't go wrong. Yeah. No, no, good. I'm looking forward to that. I'll probably catch that in a week or so. Uh, this week's busy. I can't say much right now, but full on busy, busy week. So you guys keep an eye on that. Uh, our Instagram pages, Kibla Ahmed Art, G Man, Gilman187. Uh, I, I keep always forgetting to say this, but notification button, guys. Click on it, click on it, click on the subscribe button, like, share. Uh, if you think people are going to enjoy this podcast, please share it with people and, and comment below. We, I need to see more interaction from you guys. There, I've seen there's a couple of you guys that still watch this and follow us and. I, I love you and I thank you so much for it. It's absolutely awesome that you guys follow it. And I and, and again, it's just two brothers catching up. And, and, and that was the main thing. So yeah, notification button. Click on that little bell. It will notify you when we have trailer reactions, art videos, and our podcast come up. Yeah, uh, I had to put plug in there. Uh, there is more giveaways, yeah. guys. I've got Salute. loads of stuff to give away. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start seeing the... I want to see some more interaction from you guys. Once I get more interaction, then I'm going to start giving stuff away. And that'll be over Instagram and Twitter. But I'll do Facebook give, uh, sorry, YouTube giveaways as well. But just come on, guys. Say hello sometimes. Say hello to me. Say hello to me. You saw Carlitos Red over there. That was actually, I, I missed that film. Big film. Sometimes you just put on an old classic and you're just like, man, Al Pacino was so awesome. And this movie, what was it? Was that Brian De Palma, right? Yeah. No. Fucking Francis no. Coppola. Okay, but such a brilliant movie though, man. Again, just like the storytelling, the character building, and the dialogue as well, bro. Some of those films, I'm old school films, and you hear dialogue and you just want to be them. You just want to use that somewhere, like, yeah. you know, at work or science. Like, okay, I reloaded, motherfucker. Yes. Like, I want to say that to someone at work, bro. It's cool fucking dialogue, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, no, brilliant movie, man. I've been watching... What else did I watch? I watched um, Jay and Silent Bob reboot, actually, the other day. Yes, what did you uh, think? I don't, I don't think that's going to be released in here in, in Singapore, so I had to... Uh, I'm sure um, yes. um, Kevin Smith would, uh, would, would would maybe approve, but I, He's I all had right, to... He's alright, man. He does it. He does it. He does it. Because I wanted to watch it, and it's been out, right? It's been out in cinema, and I haven't even yeah. watched it, because they're not releasing it here, which is basic. Uh, I, I enjoyed it, bro. I, again, I enjoyed it. Maybe I'm biased because I'm a fan of Kevin Smith. I'm a fan of Jay and Silent Bob. Yeah. Uh, but it just brought me back to, again to their old movie. Kevin Smith looks so well in the movie because he's all skinny and whatnot. And I love the way they touched on it. Yeah. It's like this fucking guy became a vegan and all that short shit. I love it, man. It was fucking <coughs> awesome. um, And it was just the same humor that you got back then. It was just, it was good, man. All the cameos and everything. Um yeah no brilliant i'm happy i'm happy that kevin smith made it man yeah i'm i'm very happy too it was a good film uh, i had the pleasure of meeting him last year and i'm still buzzing over that you know what i mean like every time i look at yeah. my phone uh, the first picture i see is a picture of uh, uh, kevin smith that's the, the, the little recent ones i see i've got a folder with kevin smith on my phone that's mad bro Absolutely that mad. Mad. That, yeah i'm still jealous about that that's crazy <laughs> uh, not jealous but yeah i'm jealous yeah, that's my. That's sick. I was telling some people the other day. Um, they're like, "Oh, what your brothers do?" And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, my brother does this, but on the side he does this." And he met Kevin Smith, and he, and I was, like, I was just getting moist, bro. I'm like, I don't really want to talk about his real job. I want to talk about his side thing, because um, his side piece is better than the real job. And uh, I get moist talking about it, bro. Like, my brother met Kevin Smith, and like through pictures, I met him. Like, like you know what I mean? There's some moistness. Um, yeah, no, it's sick. No, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's nice because that, I think you guys buzz off my, when when I get excited. I mean, I think I remember the two years ago when it was Aquaman premiere. Like, I, that is unbelievable, bro. Like, you know. Yeah. It started off there, right? Was it Aquaman when that started off, really? Yeah, Aquaman. That was the one that started it off. Then it moved on to a few others. I can't remember. Elite Battle yeah, Angel. Because it. Because of you, I met fucking. I went to the Shazam thing and I met yeah. Zachary Levi, Levy yeah. and, and 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 Mark Strong and yeah. shit. That's still kind of sick to me. That's amazing, man. I'm, I'm like it's. You know what? Cause like, I was thinking this about this other day because I train MMA with Misha Tate again. Yeah. In my world, she's a legend. Yeah. And now it's at a point right. It's like she's just coach. It's still yeah. Misha Tate. 
but she's coach. You know what I'm yeah. trying to say? Like she teaches us technique and, and and we just do what she tells us and we try to train and whatnot. Uh, but when I leave Singapore one day, I'm going to be like, man, listen, Misha, man, it's been an honor training with you. Like this is memories, man. Like mm. I try every week not to just geek out and be like, holy fuck, I want to talk about when you fought Holly Holm and when you fought Wanda Rousey and all that sort of shit, bro. Mm. Like, but... But when we're in the gym, it's like, all right, coach, you know what I mean? Like, it's weird. And she was just sitting down talking to me about what she's doing for CNY. And I'm like, man, this woman, she this, she knows my name, man. And she's telling me what's going on for weekend. She's asking me, what am I doing for CNY? I'm like, oh, she's, she's making small talk with me. It's like, it's weird, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, but it's inspiring, man. It's ins- inspiring. So it's crazy, man. I think where it is, like... I don't know, when you were young, did you ever think that you would meet famous people? Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like, now... It's, it's so much more common, I guess. I don't know. It's changed. I think social media has made a different presence. Uh, I think the media has changed as well. And I think people, like, you know, I think companies have changed and said, you know, you've got to do more things for the fans and the people that actually love this product. You know what I mean? Like, meet meet the people. And, and you realise yeah, yeah. what sort of buzz it gives you. I mean, some of them want to meet, some of them don't, you know. Everybody's got their own taste out of it. I mean, everybody I've met so far are all about fan service bro you know what i mean because it, we're man. the ones it's giving human. you the monies giving you the monies you know exactly. what I, mean? I mean they're all humans at the end of the day man i think i feel like celeb uh, being famous and being a celebrity these days is not maybe not the same as back in the days no maybe no. i don't know maybe and, i'm talking uh, shit but they like now they're so humanized right whereas may, and maybe because i was a kid as well or maybe because it is a social media thing and whatnot but Back then, I was like, oh, my God, that's someone so famous. Oh, my God. Like, they're probably on another planet. You know what I mean? Like, they're on a different world. Now they're like, oh, shit, that, that person is as human as I am. No, no, of course, yeah. And, and, and that's Instagram post or something like that. It's grounded, isn't it? It's grounded. I mean, I, I remember I was like that when I met Michael Keaton. And uh, not Michael Keaton, sorry, Michael Caine. And I, uh, I was working in Jessup's. And oh, I yeah, like, yeah, I remember that, yeah. And I remember him, he's just buying a camera, a camera for his grandkids. And I was like, ah, shit, it's Michael fucking Kane. <laughs> it's Michael fucking Kane up in the place. Ah, bro, I went downstairs to my manager. I was like, ah, oh, uh, Michael Kane's in the shop. And he was like, okay, he usually comes in. And I'm like, nah, man, I never met him. I've never seen him in the flesh. You know what I mean? This fucking Michael Kane. Uh, and then I went there. And I was like, uh, could I take a photo, Mr. Kane? And he was like, of course you can. And I was like, shit, shivering and shit next to him. That, but that was the first ever time I was like starstruck because I was like fucking yeah. Michael Caine, bro. And because we, I loved him so much in the Dark Knight trilogy, like I love his older movies, but the Dark Knight trilogy, to pick him as Alfred was the best thing DC and Warner Brothers ever did because he was f- amazing, bro. Mm, he was yeah. amazing, man. The guy made me cry in the last one and shit. I was like, <laughs> I yeah. failed you. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> but yeah, nah, that's what I mean. Like, it's, like, it's that feeling, but I don't but know. now maybe as well they have to be human and because if you was a dick you're getting caught straight away on social media <laughs> and someone's cutting you hey i just met fucking michael k and he was a dick to me <laughs> do you know what i mean he spat on me or some shit like that <laughs> no um, but you know some of them like you could just tell you you kind of just like i met uh who else did i meet andy circus uh what do you call it for who the guy who voices Gollum and caesar and yeah, I remember yeah. I was having a smoke outside the corner of the shop and I was, I looked and I was looking at this guy in the eye and we would like, eyes were locked and then he like kind of nodded and I was like, oh, he's one of those guys, I should like bait him up so people can chase him. But he just like nodded at me and, you know, it was nice, you know what I mean? Like it was that moment. Yeah. yeah. It's also like you have to respect them as well. Like, because back in the days, like I would think if you see a celebrity, just run up to them and grab their willies or something. I love yeah. you. Uh, yeah. But now it's like, Again, maybe because we're adults as well, but you, you just appreciate that. You gotta appreciate that. Oh man, if he's with his family, then you gotta let let him be. If he's, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. Like, there's a certain time and place, like, yeah, yeah of course, um, of that you have to maybe respect. Like, you know, um, if you saw, if I saw like the Rock, for example, oh my god, I'll, I'll be so moist and whatnot. But if I saw him with his daughter and he's feeding his daughter, I'd be like, oh man, oh my god, that's the Rock, that's the Rock. But I, there's that part of me that'd be like, no, show respect, man. He's with his kid. Mm. Don't go up there and say, oh, can I take a picture? Or, you know what I mean? Just maybe say, hey, bless you, man, or something like that and walk on. But you know what I mean? Like, you got to have that sense of, uh, uh, you got to have that respect, man. You no, know what no, I mean? Course, Depending on where they are, the situation, all that sort of stuff. 
No, definitely, bro. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. All right, I remember yeah. Kevin Hart t- t- telling a story saying that a fan <laughs> followed him in and taken it. A fan wanted to get a picture and he followed him to the toilet. So Kevin was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do it later, bro. Like, you know what I mean? Let me, let me do my thing here. <laughs> so he went into the toilet taking a shit in the, in, in the stool. And then he gets out. The guys just went in outside. Not even outside the toilet, but outside the stool. <laughs> And he was like, holy shit. So if this guy recorded me taking this shit and put that shit up on Instagram or something. Um, but it goes that bad. He was just like, wait for me outside, bro. I'll wait for you outside the toilet. Like, not in the toilet still. Like, outside shit. Oh, man. Like, the shit that they must have to go through is just because he was just paranoid about, say, if the guy heard me just plop, plop, and shit. <laughs> Kevin Hart taking the shit. Listen to this. <coughs> Oh, bro, that's hilarious. It's and it's truth, though. It is true. It is true. It is. It's a whole different game for them, isn't it? And it, and it's all about people just having a bit more self control, I suppose. Because if he Listen, notices yeah. you and he acknowledges you, then cool, isn't it? You know what I mean? Trying to follow up yeah. in the toilet with him and shit, man. God damn, man. What's my privacy here, man? Yeah, no, it's it's uh, it's yeah, it's it's a weird thing, man. I always in my head, I would just, I'll just. And when I, when I, because the gym I'm training at, you see constant one FC fighters. Again, in this MMA yeah. world, these are top high level fighters, and and they're they they're famous. You know, they're fighters, but they're the celebrities in a way. And yeah. when I see some of the uh, the local local talent and whatnot who are famous in in Asia, I'm kind of like, oh my god, and they just give the little nod, and I'm like, like. They know I'm moist and they do little hello and I'm like, cool man, hello. I'm not gonna go up to I'm gonna take a picture. Blah, blah, blah. I gotta let him be, man. Like again, yeah. seeing even the owner of one FC, Chotri something, whatever, man, he's like I see him training all the time and I'm just like, Oh my god, that guy is like he owns a one FC. It's again in my world it's just like yeah. it's it's big. Uh but I'll never run up to them and whatnot. I think I've learned as as a as an adult, maybe. Maybe because I'm an adult. You gotta show that respect, man. You no, no, of course, of course. Same here. I mean, uh, most of the pictures I get are either comic cons or 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 events, isn't it? Those are the places yeah. where you should be. When you're not when they're being private games. I mean, Michael Caine. Sorry, dude. I was just being moist. I, I saw Alfred up in the shop. I got emotional. It was one once in a lifetime moment. You were calm. You had no kids, nothing around you. I asked. You know what I mean? That was that was my moist moment. But then after that. Like, uh, there's a few other people that came in the shop and stuff like that, and I kind of just just let it be, man. You know what I mean? These these guys have come out shopping. Let them do their shopping, man. What am I going to bother them for? And as soon as mm. I did that, I remember I did that to Clive Owen. So when I met Clive Owen, same thing. I was like, ah, he's looking for a camera for his kid to do blogging. I looked up, I was like, god damn, uh, Clive Owen, shit. Oh, what's happening, bro? You, god damn, I didn't even know I was serving Clive Owen. And I got a photo with him. He didn't mind. He signed something for me as well. Oh, awesome. But then the whole shop went and got photos. And it just After. caused all sorts of problems. And I was like, oh, oh shit. shit. Yeah. Sorry, dog. You just came out to do shopping. But you look old. Yeah, but they, yeah, but they also um, they also know what they're getting into when they become actors or whatever. You know what I mean? That's yeah. that fame. They They also know that, okay... I am famous, right? This is the responsibility. This is the consequence of my job, right? Yeah. And if I am going to just walk around Oxford Street and bust into a camera shop, you know, there's a chance that people are going to notice who I am and, and I'm, I'm going to, you know, yeah. you know, I have to, you know, be cool with them. You can't, they can't be like, oh, how could you come up to me? Because they know, they know a little bit as well. No, Some exactly. people just can't leave, like a Kevin Smith, like a, uh, not Kevin Smith, like a, like a Ke- yeah, well, Kevin Smith, Kevin Hart, The Rock, you know, like Conor McGregor, whatever, they cannot leave their place and no, just go course. somewhere. They, exactly. that, that, they've gone beyond uh, a different level. So to them, it's a different extreme, you know. I remember Michael, J- I used to hear st- uh, on, on, on the podcast, like Michael Jackson was so famous that he could obviously never go out. He used to rent a whole, he used to, he used to hire a whole supermarket like Sainsbury's or something. And go shopping by himself, like nobody else was allowed in there. But he would just experience what it feels like to go shopping. He would just the whole fucking shop because he couldn't do it. Like generally, bro, like nah, you know nah. what I mean. He couldn't go buy some eggs and shit, right? So he, he would, would have to hire the whole shop for him. Uh, you're breaking up, bro. Shopping. Like 
getting to that extreme. Yeah, yeah, no, I understand, I understand. Yeah. All right, man. Shit, man, this is take. You know, this is interesting because I think it's recording at higher quality. Yeah. It's like seventeen What's gigs. The seventeen gigs. Oh damn. I, I'm gonna work on it. It's learning progress, guys. New equipment, trying to get things together, but definitely finding different platforms. But yeah. No, yeah, it must have been sad, man. That's sad that you can't just go out and do your thing, you know what I mean? Mm. It's very sad. Uh, and Madness. the guy ends up... Man, alright. Cool. Other than that, bro, nothing else much I can think of. Is got. We did, we spoke about the Morbius trailer. We did like two yeah, weeks we ago, did that right? That's old Yeah, now. that's old now, yeah. I'm okay. looking forward to that. Cool. Uh, but yeah, that, yeah, that's it, really. Other than that, uh, the this week should be an interesting week. Uh, and that's all I can say. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, I'm tomorrow. I'm gonna go watch Enter the Fat Dragon with Donnie Yen. Yeah. Um, look for watching a silly, fun movie just to chill out and and watch something. Uh, I'm gonna go use the float tank tomorrow as well. I got that booked as well. So look for it. I got a nice long weekend because it's Chinese New Year. Cool. Out here. Um, yeah, man. Other than that, that's it, man. Um, awesome. No, it's good to catch up, bro, man. Definitely good to catch up. Sure. Sure. And uh, guys. Cool. Notification bell. Subscribe to the channel if you guys want to see more trailer reactions, listen to our podcasts and some art videos coming up very soon. But uh, guys, massive thank you so far for following us on this journey. This is number 94. We're almost getting to that 100. 100. So you guys will see something. All right, guys, one love. Take care, G-Man. Peace. Peace.